Do do do. I see it, Rich. Thank you. Hi, Steve.
Welcome, Marciella. Good to see you, Shrujana. Welcome, Meg. Hey everybody, uh, glad to have you. I see some of you have already found the poll, which is great. Uh, and uh, there, there's there's a, a, a chat, uh, and yeah, somebody somebody just enabled the, the closed captioning because they want to be able to read the words that are coming out of my mouth. That's cool. Welcome, Brian and Cameron. Hi, Jamie. Uh, hello, Vlad. Uh, feel free to to say hey in the chat. Uh, yeah, I'm joined by uh, the amazing teacher Steve. Teacher Steve, full-blown LSAT instructor, just like me. Hope you guys ask lots of questions tonight. Hi, Colleen. Welcome to Rena. Hey, Kara. Welcome, Erica. Oh, we're going to have a good crowd tonight. I like it. I like it. Mm. Uh, we got just over a minute before class starts. Time enough to go grab a nice cup of tea like what I got. Hey, Bobby. Welcome, Crystal. Hello, Shannon. Glad to have you, Victoria. Hi, hey, Mike. Welcome, Gabrielle. Do, do, do. Oh, I'm so glad you accepted our invitation, Crystal. Uh, yeah, you probably want something to write with and write on. Uh, we are going to be doing some questions tonight. And uh, otherwise, you know, I just hope that you ask lots of questions as you have questions. Uh, that's that's really why Steve's here, because I probably couldn't answer everybody's questions all the time. Because uh, we get, well, I'm actually going to try to teach you some stuff. Hey, Kenya, glad to have you. I love it. so many students showing up early. <laughs> Look at you. Look at the good students coming to class early. Love it. Love it. Welcome, Kimberly. Hello, Hannah. Hey, Isla. Hey, Jackson. Hello. Hello. We do have a poll going. I'm just curious about when you're going to be taking your test. Uh, so if you if you if you want to let us know, I'm, I'll be curious. I'm, I'll partially be using uh, uh, y'all's responses to stuff to try to guide my presentation tonight because I don't know. I don't know where you're at. All right, y'all, it's time to begin. We always start class on time. Hi, I'm Teacher Jed. I'm joined by the amazing Teacher Steve. Teacher Steve is a full-blown LSAT instructor, just like me, uh, knows everything there is to know about this here LSAT. Please make sure that you ask lots of questions in the chat. Do have that poll going. I invite you to participate in it. Uh, make sure you got something to write with and write on. I like to start class with a song, so I'm giving you a couple seconds to do that while we sing. Here we go. Chaplain Corps raised my scores to the place where I belong. Elsa Channel, my study plan, whoa, raise my scores to Kaplan Corps. All my studies. Gather round me for logic. I'm following my arrow. Paraphrasing, making predictions. Into my future. I'll rest once test day comes. Kaplan course. Raise my scores to the place 
where I belong. Tech channel. I started playing whoa. Raise my scores, you Capricorn. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, you, the, the poll should be there. If you're not seeing the poll, uh, I know Steve and, and our, our technical TA, Rich, uh, will be, we'll be, be looking into that and might be able to help you find it. Uh, but but really, hey, in fact, we could just do it this way. This, this is actually this is easier, even easier. Tell me in the chat. Tell, tell me in the chat, y'all. When are you planning to take the LSAT? And I don't know is a fine answer to this question because uh, everybody, everybody, uh, should should you know at some point in their life not know when they're taking it? Not how they're taking it. June. Crystal, we got to talk about this taking it twice thing. I don't think that's I don't think that's the best plan. I don't think that's the best plan. Uh, if you want to take a practice one, I, I got practice ones you can take. Uh, so we don't need to take. Let's let's talk on that. Oh, you're coming right up, Jen. All right. Well, well I'll show you some strategies that can help you get some, high, some more points there. April, February, April, 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 August, June. I'm not sure, Lisa. I, I love that answer. I love it when you guys say you don't know. You're opening yourself up to learn something. That's great. Okay, cool. Uh, you don't have to know everything. Uh, cool. Cool. All right. Good. Uh, glad to have everybody here. Uh, we are actually going to get into material and work on hard LSAT material. Uh, those of you who uh, are have been studying, please would you tell me in the chat uh, how many hours you figured you've studied so far for the LSAT? That's the other thing I want to know. How many hours do you figure you've studied for the LSAT? Because uh, I want to tailor as much as possible this class to the people that are here. And uh, are, are you brand new? Are you have, you have zero hours on the LSAT? Shanika has 10. Brian's got 14. Lisa's about 15. Crystal's at over 50. Over 50. All right. Uh, 60 to 80 for Jeff. All right. Um, so I, I also want you to see that there's a variety of uh, skill levels in the room. That's normal. Uh, but don't don't get bummed out if it seems like everybody else knows better than you what's going on. Some people have been working at this longer than you have. That's okay. Um, I, I do want to real quick, real quick, uh, 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 talk about uh, where we are on the timeline. So we're not going to spend a ton of time here, but uh, so th this is an important consideration for those of you that don't know when you're going to be taking the test. The ideal, the perfect time to be taking the test is when you're ready to get the score that you want. Actually, that's the most important thing. Make sure that you are ready and you can make sure that you're ready by taking a practice test which is actually a real test that real lawyers took to go to real law school. Uh, there's no secrets about the LSAT. They release it. Um, so they, they'll, uh, they'll um, uh, you, you can take a practice test and know exactly how you're going to do on the real thing because they release the real test. Uh, so that, that's the, the, the most important consideration. Are you ready to get the score that you want? Um, the, uh, the, the other thing, the other thing is uh, uh, looking at our timeline here. Ideally, you would take the, the test prior to uh, the, the uh, early part of this chart. Uh, so they do rolling admissions. So the, the ideal is if you can take the June or the August test and you want to start 2024, that's perfect. You're way ahead of the game. Uh, if you have to take October, November, that kind of thing, no, no worries. You're not behind. Um, but once we start getting into January, February, April for admission that fall, uh, it becomes harder and harder to get in because of rolling admissions, right? Uh, rolling admissions mean they start saying yes to people as soon as people start applying. So there is an advantage to getting your application in early. This is different than uh, early decision. I, I don't think just about anybody should apply early decision because it's binding on you, but it's not binding on the school uh, in any significant way. Uh, and if you get in with early decision, you probably would have gotten in anyway. Uh, we can talk about that more if you want to. But uh, before we get any further, so at five minutes, I, I, I let people catch up. Uh, we're doing an exciting thing. We're doing an exciting thing with this event series. We've got an, an Apple uh, study giveaway. An Apple study giveaway. Don't worry about the poll. We're, we'll, I'll just use the chat. You guys found the chat. We'll just chat to each other. It's cool. Uh, so, uh, Steve, would you, speaking of the chat, would you put in the, the link for this Apple uh, study giveaway? Uh, it's got all the good stuff, including, including 
Joplin strategies. I know you want those. I know that's the most important thing, right? Because uh, that gets you a good LSAT score. Uh, so uh, I encourage you to uh, register there. That's our way of, yes, encouraging you to come to this thing uh, and thanking you for being here uh, and being the good students that show up and 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 learn stuff. Uh, so yeah, register and uh, and one of you, one of you will will win that prize. Okay. All right, so now some of you already know the testing format. Some of you already know the testing format. Uh, looking at the current testing format, which we do know is going to be the testing format for the next admission cycle, meaning through uh, 2024 tests. Uh, this, is, this is the way uh, the, the, the LSAT is structured. Tatiana, because of rolling admissions, it is an advantage to get your application in earlier, but you shouldn't take the test until you're ready to get the score that you need, because you, you really only want to take the LSAT once. You need one score. Uh, it's not the best way to spend 200 bucks. It's also, right, like, uh, while uh, it, it's uh, law schools only consider your highest score, it can't help you to have a low score, right? Uh, so th that's why I, I tell my students, the plan should be, let's take one. If we have to take it again, right? Cause you know, something terrible happens. We're sick or something. Okay, cool. But let, let's have the plan B. We're going to do this once. We're going to do it right. And, you know, uh, Steve and I, Mary Kaplan has, has 90 practice tests that you can take that are real LSATs, right? So there's, just, there's no secrets here. You can make sure that you're ready ahead of time. Yeah, Rick's ready. I love it. I love it. All right. Those of you who know, though, look, those of you who know, which of these sections are you least concerned about? Logical reasoning, which is mostly about arguments. Reading comprehension, which is kind of what it sounds like. Also, I, I think it's not at all what it sounds like. Uh, yeah, writing doesn't count. Writing doesn't count because I'm, I'm probably going to have to write. I can't probably talk very in depth about all of these in the next hour. So I'm trying to figure out which of these, which of these should I, should I talk less about? Uh, so which of these are you least concerned about? No, Tatiana, you, your, your score is good for five years. So you could take the test uh, it, it, next week and, uh, and your, your, your score would be good for five years. All right, something, it's either logical reasoning or it's reading comp. It's either logical reasoning or it's reading comp. Uh, Rob, Steve's going to get back to you about the, the writing. The writing's not scored. The writing's not scored, so don't, don't worry about the writing sample. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's see. All right. I'm going to give you guys the short version of logical reasoning, I think. We're going to talk reading comprehension because I actually think that reading comprehension is the least understood section. Um, but first, we got to talk scoring because everybody, everybody worries about score. So it is scored on a bell curve. That means that most people are grouped up around the center of this chart, right? Most people are here. And that's good news because... That means that small increases in your score can have a big impact on your score. Uh, so let's say, let's say for giggles, that you started your very first practice test, you started at a 146. You got about 35 right answers and you're at the 30th percentile. So I want to move your score 10 percentiles in front of literally thousands of other test takers looking at the raw score number, how many more right answers, tell me in the chat, you're gonna to need to get to move your score 10 percentiles from the 30th percentile to the 40th percentile. How, how many? Three more right answers. Yeah, that's one more right answer per section. Be real with me. If you get some uh, 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 resources to practice with and actually practice with them, it, can you learn to get one more right answer per section? Is that a doable goal? Yeah, I know you can do that, right? Everybody can do that. You can do that. That's what we're talking about. And this has a huge impact, right? Because you're moving in front of thousands of people, literally thousands of people to go 10 percentiles. You want to go 10 more percentiles? It's one more right answer per section, 50th percentile. All right, it's, it's, it's four. So you're going you're gonna to have to get an extra one in there. But, but you, you see, this is the pattern up the chart that one more right answer per section moves your score 10 percentiles. That's a huge deal. Who in here, though, wants an elite score? Where are my gunners at? 
I got to have some. You, you don't want a good score. You want 160s, 170s. Where, where are my gunners at? You want, you want to be up here. Okay. Let me be the first to say, I know you can do it. It also has a standardized test. The test the same skills, the same ways over and over and over again. You can do it. But the game changes once you get into the 160s. Because not only is the material harder, you're already getting all the easy stuff right. Right? So the material is harder. But also, you need more and more right answers because you're competing with fewer and fewer folks out here at the end of the bell curve. So you want to go 10 percentiles from a 160? Well, you don't need one more right answer per section. You need two more right answers per section. Get you that 164. You want to move 10 percentiles from a 164? Well, you don't need two more right answers per section. You need three more right answers per section. Go from the 90th to the 90th percentile, right? So th this is why the test gets harder and harder to improve at. All of you can do it. This is what Steve and I do. We help students hit their, hit their goal score. You can do this. But I just want you to plan this into your study plan. Right, that uh, as you do better, you have to work harder. It's going to take more work, more effort, more time for you to keep improving. I, I hear from students who are like, I think I maxed out. That's not true. I've been doing this for 10 years. I've gotten better at the LSAT. Uh, right, like you, you can keep improving. It's just the, those improvements become harder and harder to come by. Uh, last thing in terms of study planning that I want to say here, uh, my, my rule of thumb, if you want to see a significant improvement from your uh, first test, and if you haven't taken a first test, that's where you should start. You, you should budget on a uh, hundred hours of practice. Uh, that's a good a good starting place. Top scores, uh, folks that score one sixties, one seventies, they they average two hundred and fifty hours of practice, more than two hundred fifty hours of practice. That's not according to, to to Jed or to Kaplan. That's that's according to the LSAC, the people that write the test. So. Uh, that's a lot of work. <laughs> and we, we have plenty of work for you to do, right? You're not going to run out of things to do, but, uh, but, but that, that is a lot of work. And, and, and the reason it takes so much time and effort and so much practice, the reason you can't cram for this is the skills-based test. And y'all, y'all already know this. If you want to improve a skill, what's the only way to improve a skill? There's a literal only way to improve a skill. That's right. You got to practice it. And that's why it takes so long. And that's why it takes so much effort. And that's why this test is different than most other tests. You just can't cram for it. So uh, right, I, I just want everybody to bear that in mind as you are uh, planning out your studies, right? That, that uh, you are going to need a lot of material to work with and practice on. Um, I can teach you the strategies pretty quick. I'm going to teach you some strategies tonight. But just because you know the strategies doesn't mean you can do the strategies. And, and so that, that's where your practice comes. All right, cool. Uh, I want to get it through as much content as possible with y'all. I also need to save a couple minutes at the end so we can do some QA uh, and, and that kind of thing. So let's run into content. If you have questions, please keep asking those questions. Teacher Steve is there for you. Teacher Steve will answer those questions. Don't be shy. Uh, I'm going to try to get logical reasoning and reading comp in. We're going to try to make it happen. Uh, okay, reading comp. Worst name section. It's not about reading. It's not about comprehension. I know it's not those things because if it was about reading and comprehension, all of you would do perfect because all of you can read and comprehend English. It's not what it's about. What it's about is organizing complicated info. Actually, reading comp and logic games are the same thing. People don't like it when I say this, but it, it's true. You organize a bunch of complicated info, and then in logic games, we make deductions. And in reading comp, we make inferences. The, the inference and deduction mean the same thing. They're, they're, so so the, the skill that I teach my students is to outline and make them promise me that they will not learn the stuff that's in the passage. You've been well-trained to read the same way. Top to bottom, left to right, every single word, remember the stuff because there's going to be a test later. It doesn't work in reading comp. You know it doesn't work in reading comp. There's too much stuff. There's not enough time. So that's not what we do. We outline it instead, just like you're going to do in law school. Uh, and if you haven't heard yet, outlining. Outlines are a really big deal in law school. <laughs> really stinking big deal. If you get a reputation for being good at outlining, having good outlines, you're going to have a lot of friends. They're one of your outlines. Uh, so yeah, th this is an important uh, law school skill as well. But the other weird thing about reading comp is sometimes students are like, well, did, Jed, should I uh, read, the, read the questions first? And, okay, I get it. We're, we're just reading the passage so we can answer the questions. So I look at the questions. You don't need to. Y'all, 
to tell me in the chat what's one question that you know for a fact you are going to get in every passage. I like, yes, you will. Yes, you will. There's going to be a recording. And we'll send that link out to the inbox that you registered with. Yeah. Which of the following expresses the author's main idea in the passage? You know they're going to ask that question because they ask that question every single time. So just read so you can answer it. You don't even need to go looking for it. You know that it's there. And then Trip the Test Maker, I don't, I don't actually know any of the test writers. I call them Trip. Uh, they think that every other question relates to that main idea question. So that's why that's so important to get. That's why was, we're going to focus on. And then the other questions are mostly about what, what people think, right? Which of the following expresses the author's attitude toward so-and-so? Or the passage suggests that the author would be most likely to agree with which of the following statements. Yeah. So we read for that stuff. Hey, let me show you. Let me show you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to show you how I approach a passage. So I've done a weird thing with this passage that we're going to do. I have grayed out the text that I wouldn't read. Well, there's a go. There we go. So uh, here's, here's this passage. You, you should use the structure and the keywords of the passage to figure out what's important, the structure and the keywords. So uh, set per sentence, almost always important because I'm trying to outline this thing. The topic here, what is the topic of this here passage, this real reading kind of passage that we're working with today? What is this passage about? I want to know what the topic is because that's going to help me get right answers. Just read the first sentence. You, you can get it just from first sentence. What's this, what's this passage about? Oh, you don't want you guys got shy all of a sudden. Why why would yeah? This is about Amos Tutola. This is about Amos Tutola. Yeah, that's what it's about. All right, Amos Tutola. And uh, he was the, the first to receive wide international recognition. Okay, it's famous Amos. Famous Amos, that's what this passage is about. I'm not gonna read these details about how Amos Tutola wrote stuff. It's not that I well, it is that I don't care because that's not going to help me get right answers. If I need that info later, I can come back and get it, but I'm I'm not even going to read that. I mean this literally. The secret to reading comp is not reading faster, it's reading less. All right. So then, well, we, oh, we get an opinion about them. They were quick to be praised, quick to be praised by many literary critics. Oh, okay. So some critics really liked it. And then we get another opinion. Look at the contrast here. Others, however, dismissed his works. Oh. All right. So there's a debate. There's this debate about Amos Tutuola. Is, is, is he a good uh, novelist or a bad novelist? And Natalia, using the keywords, which you learn about when you sign up for my class. Uh, however, no, uh, that is an important keyword. All right. Oh, oh boy. Who is giving us an opinion here? After this, however, it is the author's opinion. That's probably pretty important. That's probably pretty important, right? And what the author thinks, that's probably pretty important. So uh, we, we need to paraphrase this. How would you paraphrase the author's position towards famous Amos? Or maybe to the critics? What does the author think? Yeah, that's right. The critics have screwed up. That's what the author thinks. This author is arguing that the critics have screwed up. Oh, well, I bet the rest of the passage will, will be about backing up that opinion of the authors because the author has a clear point of view about this. Let's find out. Paragraph, oh, so, so I make some notes on my scratch paper. I don't, I don't have scratch paper. Here are my notes. Famous Amos. The critics said happy things and sad things about him, but the author says he didn't write novels. Critics are wrong about that. Oh, okay. So no matter. And then again, we get a strong opinion from your author. Utuola was not a novelist. Critics were right about this thing. They're not original, but it's important to bear in mind. Oh. The most useful approach is as working in the African oral tradition. So here's what my notes would look like for paragraph two. Again, I'm not trying to get all the details. I don't need the details. I need the big picture. I'm trying to outline, making a table of contents. So the author again says, he was not a novelist. He's a folk teller. 
And the best approach to him is within the African oral tradition. Now, time out. What has the author told us about the African oral tradition? I mean, how do they say that? I mean, you, you could make that inference maybe, Jed, but I don't think the author said that. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm with Kimberly. I don't actually know anything about the African oral tradition. That's a weird way to end this paragraph too. What, what do you think paragraph three might be about? Yeah, probably going to be about this African oral tradition thing, right? Oh, there it is, within this tradition. And then they tell me about what, what happens within the tradition. Okay, cool. I don't need those details. I can always come back to them if I need them. It's an open book test. Thus, all right, there's a conclusion. Within the story, they're allowed to maneuver. All right, so Tutuola could, could do with... Transform them. Okay, cool. Here's what the African oral tradition is. You can be flexible. Sweet. Now, again, look at the big picture. Don't zoom in, zoom out. We're trying to get the big picture. Don't learn the details. Get the structure. Famous Amos was not a novelist. The best approach is within the African oral tradition. Here's what the African oral tradition is. What, what's the missing piece of evidence? What hasn't our author given us to finish off their argument and convince us that famous Amos, the best approach to them is through the African oral tradition? Yeah, we, we don't know actually what I mean, he wrote. Right? Like, so, so maybe we need some evidence about how Amos's works specifically work within the African oral tradition. And as Steve says, this is the power of this approach. I don't care about any of these details. They're there whenever I need them. I've got this great outline that I can refer to, but I probably won't have to learn them ever because they don't ask questions about that stuff. They mostly don't. This is the way you finish reading comp, not by reading faster, by reading less. I would not read any of the things in here. I would just make this note. Evidence that Amos is within the African oral tradition. Here it all is. If I ever get a question about it, I know where to go. Okay. Oh, here's a question. Now, please, no spoilers in chat. Since, since folks are having trouble finding the poll, no spoilers in chat. Don't tell me the answer. Don't tell me the answer. But I am going to give you uh, 20 seconds to evaluate on your own these answers. Save your answer. Don't put it in the chat yet. And then I'll let you let everybody answer. So everybody, 20 seconds, ready, steady, go. What's the answer, y'all? Which of these is correct? I get rid of that question mark. You know it. Yeah. Well, it exactly matches our reading. This is not subjective. This is not subjective. That matches the passage. The other answers don't match the passage, and that's why they're wrong. Hey, speaking of which, would this question have been easier or harder to get right if we had learned all the details about the African oral tradition and how famous Amos novels worked within the African oral tradition? Yeah, it would have been way harder. Would have been way harder. That's why this is so great. And that's why this is so useful in law school, too. You're going to have four to 500 pages of reading a week. You're not going to be able to read every single word and remember all that stuff. You need these outlines. But the outline helps you on these other questions, too. All right, we need to, to know what the author's attitude towards Tutuola in the world literature is. Okay, well, uh, your author did express some strong opinions here. You could go back to the passage if you needed to, but I, you know, you got an expert outline to help you out here. Again, take twenty seconds, and then.
Uh, that, was, that was 20 seconds. What, what's the uh, what's the answer here? Which of these sounds like our author? Uh huh. Are you mad yet? No, I'm serious. Are you mad yet? You've been working so hard in reading comp. You've been learning all this junk about all this junk. You don't need to learn any of this stuff, y'all. They always ask the same kinds of questions. If you read for that stuff, if you build a good outline, you can get the answers so much easier and faster. This is the Kaplan method. This is the Kaplan method. Uh, I, I want to make sure that we have time to talk at least a little bit about logical reasoning. So we're going to leave this here. But reading comp is my very favorite thing to teach because of this. Uh, because it blew my mind when I learned about it. I was super resistant at first as a student, but then but then I, once I figured out how and why it worked, changed changed my life basically. Uh, all right. So before we we get into logic games, hey hey, we're gonna do a hybrid game next. I told you that we're gonna work on hard stuff. When I say hybrid games, um, what 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 goes through your head when I say hybrid games? There's gonna be two or more types. Yeah, it's gonna be mixed. It's probably gonna be real hard, right? <laughs> well, Sheila, you came to the right place. So, right, the, one of my first takeaways is that one, one, strategy matters. As you just saw, strategy can make a difference. And we'll see that too with these hybrid games. Two, all of you are different, right? Some of you, right, were telling me that reading comp is a thing that you aren't worried about at all. And others of you, like you, you, you aren't worried at all about logic games. You, when I say hybrid games, you get a little bit excited. It's cool. You're in a safe space. Uh, but but seriously, y'all, the, the, the different people need to be doing different work because different people have different strengths and weaknesses. So uh, right, the, the, this is one of the reasons that I encourage people to explore tutoring. Recently, Kaplan has opened up tutoring. We used to have all the tutoring locked into these packages and you had to spend lots and lots of money to get. You don't have to do that anymore. You can get just the amount of tutoring that you need. Now, if you buy more hours, it's cheaper per hour. That's true. But but you can right size it to exactly what you need. Um, and, and so if, if you want to sit down one to one with a with a Kaplan tutor and have them build you a custom study plan. They'll do that. We can do that. That's cool. And right? if you want a couple hours to work on reading comp or logic games, we can do that, right? We've got plenty of Kaplan experts that would happily work with you one-to-one, -one, totally custom, totally flexible. All right. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, I, I want to get into this, this here, this here uh, hybrid game with you. Hybrid game. This was the hardest game in the section that it appeared in. This is a uh, sequence matching or sequence distribution hybrid. It depends on how you like to view things. I don't care what you call things. I care that you can set things up and get right answers. Uh, so first things first, first things first. In logic games, there is some knowledge that is very helpful. And this is why you should get resources to help you. Not, not just things to practice on. You need things to practice on, obviously, but also, Right, you 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 want to to get this here, uh, right? Strategy sheet that has all the sketches on it. See all the sketches on it. Uh, by the by the way, the, this this strategy sheet is part of the study guide that we emailed to the email that you registered for the event under. Uh, so uh, so so look at that study guide because it's got all the the, the pictures on it. Um, and, and so uh, you're welcome, Kimberly. Uh, right. So so there is some knowledge that helps. Right, knowing what the standard sketches are. But there's also just a ton of strategy that you can use to help yourself out here. Like this first question, this first question is what we call an acceptability question. A couple of things to know about an acceptability question. Just about every game has one. It's usually the first question. I bet, tell me in the, in the chat, uh, y'all, is this the question that you've had the most success with in logic games? The one that just asked you, which of these could be the, the acceptable answer? Oh no, not, not Crystal. But yes, Jen, or several of you, several of you, right? This does tend to be one of the easier questions, but all right. Um, who in here has wasted a lot of time though, finding the answer to this question? Who in here feels like sometimes these questions can take forever? All right, cool, cool. I'm gonna show you a strategy. Come on, come on. Uh, so a couple things to note, every, just about every game has one. Uh, but but you don't you don't actually need to set up the game to get the point. So I want you to get this point on every single game for surezies. And what you do is instead of doing the normal logical thing, like I'm going to compare answer choice alpha to all of my rules over here. We're going to go the other direction. 
We're going to go the other direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my rules and I am going to compare each answer to the rules. So rule one, Farmington takes place before Homestead. Which answer can we eliminate because Farmington is not taking place before Homestead? Which answer can we eliminate? Delta. Delta goes away forever. Also, I don't have to check rule one ever again. This is why this is faster. All right, rule two, Farmington gets only one executive. Which answer can we eliminate? Because Farmington's only supposed to have one executive. Echo goes away forever. All right, rule three, Quinn must happen before Rodriguez or Taylor. What can we get rid of? Because Quinn is supposed to happen before both Rodriguez and Taylor. Charlie goes away forever. And then four, Sasada cannot take place after Vendergar. What can we eliminate? Because it breaks rule four. It's pretty good, right? It's pretty good. Uh, every acceptability question works this way. Every single one. Use this strategy, please. Practice this strategy. Love this strategy. Elimination is a powerful tool on the LSAT. Nowhere more so than an unacceptability question. Uh, so yeah, strategy matters. Lots of practice, but using the right strategies can help you level up faster. Okay, uh, now the other reason that I wanted to show you this is I bet that it's happened to you. It's happened to me that you get to a logic game and you're not exactly sure what the picture should look like. Well, one of my other favorite strategies in logic games is stealing from the test maker. Look, they had to set up this game to ask you this question. See that they, they put the, the order, they, they put them in order, one, two, three, and then they put the, the place that they're going and the people that visit it. Well, I'm just gonna steal that picture. That's the picture I'm gonna to use too. Cause I know that one works cause they, they used it. Stealing is allowed. So that's what we gotta do. We gotta set up this game now. So I'm gonna use the, the test maker's picture. We got two types of entities. Notice that I'm using uppercase and lowercase. Steal this too. Uh, it, it helps you keep your, your entity separate. Uh, I, I used to get myself all confused. <laughs> so uppercase and lowercase when you got two types of entities. Uh, and, and we're just gonna steal the test maker sketch, right? So I'm gonna put my, each of my people in and we're told that each uh, site gets at least one uh, executive visiting. So I'm gonna put my people over here now I'm gonna put which executives go on the other side because I'm lazy and, uh, and I, I don't like to, to draw more than I have to. Okay, so I'm gonna keep those things separate. Here we go. First rule, Farmington takes place for home homestead. Notice that I'm translating this rule to match my picture. See, that I have been known, I have been known to uh, draw this like this before. Farmington takes place before homestead. That's a good way to draw this rule too. But it wouldn't be a particularly good way to draw this rule on this particular game because that's not what it's going to look like in my picture. Match your picture, always. And then we get this second rule. Farmington gets only one executive. And now I've gotten two rules about uh, Farmington. And uh, this is what we call a duplicated entity here at Kaplan. And they're a valuable source of deductions. So I, th I think to myself, well, there's only a couple ways for this to happen, right? That Farmington takes place before Homestead. Where can Farmington not be? Farmington can't be last, right? So Farmington's either first or second. And the second rule is about Farmington only getting one. That's going to determine a lot of what happens in this game. So I'm going to use another Kaplan strategy called limited options. I'm going to do two pictures. And I know that sounds like a bunch of work, but it's going to make it so much easier to look at and see what's happening in this game. So, all right, in one picture, I've got Farmington second, and then Homestead follows, and then Morningstar is first, Morningside. Uh, and then in the other picture, Farmington is first, and then I don't know between Homestead and Morningside which one is second, which one is third. And then I'm using that double slash to tell me that it's full. Nobody, nobody else can go there. So I've incorporated both rules one and two straight into my sketch. I don't have to worry about them anymore because I can just look at them anytime I want. All right, then we got Quinn with Rodriguez and Taylor, rule three. The important thing to note here is we don't know the relationship between Rodriguez and Taylor, that Rodriguez and Taylor could be 
at the same time, but they don't have to be, right? Taylor could come before Rodriguez or vice versa. So I'm, I'm doing this branch, this branching technique to keep track of that, to remind myself. This is a place that lots of uh, new test takers run into trouble is that they don't capture the what uncertainty there is in the game and you can get yourself in big trouble that way. Now, I wanna turn this last rule, rule four, from a negative into a positive because that's easier for my brain to process this is another good strategy. So rule four here says Sasada can't take place after Vandercar. What does that mean? If Sasada can't come after Vandercar, I want to make that a positive, not a negative. Are you sure? Thank you. <laughs> Brian got it. Brian got it. It either comes before Vandercar or it comes at the same time as Vandercar. Y'all, how much trouble do you think I would get myself into on this game if I made a mistake here and I thought that Sasada was always in front of Vandercar? How much trouble do you think I'd get myself into on this game? A lot. And I have gotten myself into trouble that way. I've made this mistake several times. That's how I learned. That's how you're going to learn too. You're going to make mistakes. That's how everybody learns, right? Uh, but, but this is the kind of thing we got to be very careful about. And this is why I tell my students, we do not rush when we're setting up a game. This is not the place to try to save time. It's not like reading comp where we try not to read anything. Here, we read very closely and we double check or triple check if need be. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. We do not want to make mistakes on our setup. Uh, uh, and then that's it. That's, that, that's, that's how I would set up this game. And I know it doesn't look like very much, but just this little setup is going to let me get right answers in the right amount of time. Because now I've got all the information organized. I've translated my rules so that I can just look at it. And I want, I want you to try. I want you to try. So we, we got a, 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 the, question, the second question in this game, question 18. This is what we call a new if question. New if question. And so the Kaplan strategy, when you get to a new if question, which is the next question type I would be looking for, new if means new sketch. So I'm going to draw a new sketch. Now, some of you are like, Jed, come on, man. I just want to get the point. I know. But see, if you, if you write on your master sketch over here, you're going to have to erase all that stuff. It's faster just to, to write a new little sketch to play with. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to write a new little sketch to play with. I won't cheat. I won't cheat. I, I will do it with you. So question 18, question 18. So we're told that the second of the three visits includes both Rodriguez and Taylor. Rodriguez and Taylor. Okay. Well, you tell me, what can we deduce if Rodriguez and Taylor are second? Before I'm looking at answer choices, I'm trying to build out my sketch. So what else can we say must be true if Rodriguez and Taylor are second? Great deduction that Farmington must be first. And we can see that. And because we drew the two sketches, it's easier to see. Farmington must be first because Farmington right, only gets one entity. Okay. What else can we say? Good, Kimberly. That means that Quinn also must be first and is the only entity that is first. Good. And then, again, I don't know between Homestead and Morningside, but I can say something about one of Sasada or Vandercar. Which one can I say something about? Sasada or Vandercar? Vandercar must be last. Vandercar must be last. We don't know about Sasada. Sasada could be last, but Sasada could also be second, right? Uh, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure where Sasada goes. I'm not sure where, where Homestead and Morningside goes. That's as far as we can go. But this question is asking what must be true. So I submit to you, Alpha, does alpha have to be true? This is a hybrid game. This was the hardest game that showed up in this section. I'm going to be really real. Did I do any magic here? Did I do anything that is just totally beyond you and your understanding? Is there anything here that you're just like, uh, I could never learn to do that? Is there any magic? 
Not really, right? Like I was organized and I had the advantage of having lots of practice. So I know how to translate the rules and not make mistakes. I knew to be careful about uh, translating rule four, right? And I have standard shorthand that I reach for. But yeah, Kimberly, I, I, I don't think that sometimes people mystify games and they want them to be like some kind of magic. There's no magic here, y'all. It's just organize the information well, just like reading comp, and then make your deductions and then you get points. But it's really, really frustrating at first because you don't have that experience and you just got to push through that, y'all. You just got to push through that. You got to confront your fears. You can learn to do this. Uh, but but it does take time and effort and practice to get there. Crystal, of course you could. Of course you could, but uh, I, I wouldn't have known that without, uh, without making all my deductions. So so my technique right, is, is I just make all my deductions and then I evaluate. Because sometimes I'll make a deduction and I'll look up the answer choices. Right, This is the thing I did when I was a student. I didn't make a deduction. I'd be all proud of myself. I'd look up the answers and what didn't was in the answers. And then I'd get frustrated, right? Just make all your deductions. They don't take very long. And then you can evaluate your answers. That's the way I do it. So Elise, uh, when I'm setting up logic games, right? The, unlike reading comp, where I think that if you're taking more than three minutes to outline the passage, you're reading too much. With logic games, it depends on the game, right? Some games I, I draw more. Here I had two little sketches. That takes more time. Uh, some games I draw less, right? So it, it depends on the game. Uh, but I, I try to take my time with the deductions because as you just saw, right, if you make the deductions, the questions aren't that big of a deal. In fact, sometimes they ask a question that literally just rewards you for making the deductions. Like watch, here's, here's another, this is a top question. Most people got this question wrong on test day. Uh, I want you to just evaluate the answers. I'm going to give you 30 seconds, evaluate these answers. No spoilers in chat. There you go. Echo, right? And we can see that clear as day in our sketch. There it is. Uh, that's the right answer. Uh, right. And so, so th this is the thing that deductions are so valuable for helping you understand the game. And it really is just a matter of organizing the information in a way that makes sense, but is also accurate. And that's why you need to practice so much because you're going to make mistakes. If you're anything like me, uh, you're going to make tons of mistakes. The reason I'm better than you at logic games, you want to know I'm better than you at logic games? Because I've done literally every single logic game, most of them more than once. When you've done that many logic games, you'll be really good at logic games too. But, but it does take practice. It does take practice. Okay. Now, I have time to teach you about one logical reasoning question type. So let, let, let me tell you about one really hard logical reasoning question type. Parallel reasoning questions. Parallel reasoning questions. Oh boy, they're so long. They take forever. Yeah, they do. But I got a strategy for this one too. Strategy matters every part of the test. So uh, here, I've got to find two arguments that have the same exact structure, the same exact structure. And so as a Kaplan expert, the way I approach this is I start by analyzing my argument, finding the conclusion. And does anybody know the keyword here that I would use to identify my conclusion in the stimulus? Who, who's trained their eyeballs? There you go, Jen. Yeah, therefore, therefore, these keywords, they keep coming up. Uh, all right, so there's my conclusion. And then I would just characterize and type this conclusion. All right, so this author is making a uh, causal claim that is uncertain that uh, if you don't have this thing, then you are unlikely to get the result that you want. Without this thing, you are unlikely to get the result that you want. Okay, cool. Uh, I, now I want to evaluate my answers. <laughs> I want to evaluate my, my answers. So, all right, let's, let's, let's go do this thing. Let's go do this thing. Uh, does alpha match? 
This is an uncertain. And if you don't have this thing, you probably won't get that thing. No, that doesn't match, right? It's much stronger. So I can eliminate it. Yeah, just like that. See ya. All right, bravo. Is this sim is, does this match? Is an, if you don't have this thing, you probably won't get the result that you want. Yeah, so we leave it. I can't pick it because I got I got to look at all the answers because there could be more than one. But let's go. All right, Charlie, does Charlie match that uh, I'm saying? If you don't have this thing, you probably won't get the no. That doesn't match at all, right? That's totally different. Right? That's not going to Delta. Does this match? It's uncertain. Is it saying that if you don't have this thing, you are unlikely to get the result that you want, though? No, there's no causality here. We're just saying it'd be harder. Harder doesn't mean that you're not going to get the result, right? Uh, I, I'm saying if you don't have this thing, you're not going to get the result. That's different. That's different. They're, they're not, not that causal relationship. All right. Echo. Uncertain. Causal, if you don't get have this thing, you won't get the result you want. No, that doesn't matter. Okay. And so the answer is Bravo. That's the right answer here. Now I want to be clear that th this is this is not easy. And uh this is while this is the shortest path to the right answer, it, it still takes some effort. I will acknowledge that. But even on parallel reasoning questions, which most people consider to be one of the most difficult of uh, logical reasoning question types, there is a strategy that can help you. And because I'm all about practice, Steve knows I'm Mr. Practice. You got to practice. You got to practice. You got to practice. I want to let you practice. So here's what I'm going to do. Here, I got a parallel reasoning question. Parallel reasoning question. Yeah. All right, here you go. Characterize the conclusion of this argument. Eliminate any answers that don't match. You'll probably also have to consider the evidence on this one because I think there's two that actually match. Uh, but make that your first pass, uh, giving you just over a minute. Do your best work. So there's our conclusion right at the very beginning. And here we have a prediction and a certain prediction. Correct answer, delta. We have another certain prediction. This will happen. This will happen. What's the uh, other certain prediction here? There's another answer choice that has a certain prediction. Oh, no, Bravo is an uncertain prediction, Jen, because of the probably. Well, probably. That's not certain. I'm giving myself an out. Echo. Echo is a certain prediction. The problem is the evidence doesn't match here. In Echo, we're using formal logic evidence, unlike a pattern of past events. Um, and that's why Echo is not parallel. I don't expect you to master anything the first time you see it. You shouldn't expect that either. Remember, our benchmark, 100 hours of practice if you want to make an, a, a big increase in your score. Top scorers, my gunners, 250 hours of practice. That's what you're shooting for. And 
since all of you need things to do with those 100 to 250 hours, right? You should work with us. Uh, so if you're going to be one of the, are, are, are you, are you a hardworking student? Kimberly, yes. Yes, you can on parallel reasoning. Are, are you going to be the very engaged group? Is that the student that you are? I assume so because you're here at this event on a Tuesday night when you could be doing literally anything else. Are you going to be one of these good students? Is that who you are? Are you the most engaged group? There's a real question I'm asking. Is it, what kind of student are you? Are you a just show up to class student or are you a work outside of class student and make sure that you uh, ask questions via email of your teacher and you come before class and hang out after class? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So let's add 15 points to your SAT score, <laughs> right? But this, is the, this is the reason I love this job is because it's very exciting to help people reach their goals. And, and if you're willing to work hard, Steve and I and Kaplan, you're the Kaplan teachers, we will show you the right work to do. And as long as you do that work, you will improve. It's really straightforward. Um, so we, we have all the things, but but yeah, on average, our most engaged students add 15 points to score. And that's an average, right? I, I, see, I see everything, y'all. I've had thousands of students. I guarantee whatever your starting score is, I have had a student reach your goal score. I've seen it all. Uh, so it doesn't matter where you're starting from, as long as you get the right resources and are willing to work hard in the right ways, you can get to where you want to be. But but that that that's what I'm selling is I'm selling hard work. Uh, and and Sheena, this is the other thing. I know y'all have school, y'all have work, y'all have family responsibilities. This is also why all of you need a personalized study plan. Thank you for that segue. Uh, because you have a real life. You're, all of your lives are not the same. I have students that can literally do 40 hours of LSAT a week. They can treat it like a full-time job. It's wonderful. We can make a huge increase in their score in a month or two. Most of my students are not like that though, right? And so they need to spread out their studies over more months. I, think, I, I would say six months is, a, is a, good, a good conservative bet if you have a busy life, um, right? That you can get your 250 hours, but you're gonna have to spread them out over more weeks. And that's okay, right? You can still do the work. You can still build those skills. But we just have to acknowledge, right, that that's the reality that we're working under. So all of you should have a personalized study plan based on not only your real life, but also your real goal. Because I know y'all don't tell me in the chat what's your goal? Where, where are you going to go to law school? Number one choice. Where are you going to be? I bet we're going to see all kinds of answers in here. Rutgers, Michigan, BYU, Seton Hall. Harvard, what, like it's hard? Syracuse, Vermont, Maine, Western, Fordham, Boston, Georgia, yeah, FSU. Uh, so a lot of good schools there, right? And I know that you can do it, but right, based on your GPA and based on that school, you probably need a very different LSAT score than somebody else, right? And so it's your real life, your real goals, and then your real strengths and weaknesses because you're not the same as everybody else. Some of you are really good at logic games. Some of you are really good at reading comp. Well, you probably don't need to practice those things as much, right? That we want you spending your time on the things that you need to study. And that's why having a personalized study plan makes the big difference. So we'll give you everything, right? You're not going to run out of things to do. I've never had an LSAT student run out of things to do. If you sign up for a full course, you get every question. You get explanations for every single answer choice. There are reasons that the wrong answers are wrong. To anybody that tells you, has you, have you ever heard from somebody that on the LSAT, you have to pick the least wrong answer? So there's one answer that's like 80% right. And then there's other answers that are only up to like 60% right. Have you ever heard this from somebody? Uh, wh whoever told you that, just stop listening to them because they're either lying to you, which I don't assume, or they just don't know what they're talking about. There's one credited answer. It is flawless. You need to understand why the wrong answers are wrong. But we, we offer all the things in all the ways because different people learn best in different ways. And we, I want you to learn best in the way that's best for you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I am one teacher. We have lots of great teachers. We have lots of great tutors. We have a flexible prep on your own options. We do boot camp. Uh, and I'll be involved with the next boot camp starting up in April. Um, this is the best deal you're going to get, y'all. 20% off anything. That includes boot camp. That can save you like a thousand bucks almost. 
Uh, so, so yeah, use, use, use that, please use that code. Please use that code. Uh, Jamie, you can, uh, uh, if you want to talk to somebody, when you log in at captest.com, you can talk using the chat button or you can call in. Uh, they're also, it's explained, like there's a button that just says extend your resources. Uh, and if you need help finding that, uh, we, we can, we, we can help you find it or email your teacher and your, your teacher will send you a screenshot. Um, yeah. You're welcome. Um, but yeah, yo, and I'm also one of the LSAT channel teachers. Uh, LSAT channel is something that everybody gets. It's over hundred hours of custom workshops that we, on individual skills. So I'm going to be your teacher. If you, if you sign up for a course, I'm going to be your teacher. If you, we now sell the LSAT channel by itself. You want those hundred hours of workshop? Great. By the, by the LSAT channel. We, we, come, come to the LSAT channel. I'm teaching tomorrow night. What am I teaching? I'm teaching uh, process and mapping games. I'm teaching inference basics. And I'm teaching prepping for one week to go because some of my students have one week to go. Uh, so, uh, Jamie, maybe I'll see you on the channel tomorrow. Um, we, we, we got all the things. The, the real question is, what do you need? And let's get it for you. And you all, I, I, I mean this. If you want to be a lawyer, and I assume you do, maxing out your LSAT score is the single best thing you can do for your legal career. Because the LSAT determines if you go to law school and where you go to law school and how much you pay for law school. It's the single biggest determinant of scholarship money. And that's going to go a long way to tell who you meet and what kind of options you're going to have coming out of law school, right? So seriously, if you're serious about this, this is the start of your legal career. Treat it seriously. Get yourself the help you need. You are worth investing in. Um, and if if you, if the 20% the discount is enough, we do tuition assistance. We do. We do. If you need help, Kaplan wants to help you. We do. Um, so like, let us know what you need and, and we'll figure it out. There, there's a way. There's a way. So, uh, Erica, so if you have the on-demand course, you, you won't be able to come to my live class lessons, right? That, that's the trade-off. But you can add the LSAT channel, which then you can go to, right? If you, if you got the channel access, then so like my workshops tomorrow night that I'm teaching, you can go to load those live. Uh, so kind of, <laughs> kind of is the answer. Uh, it depends, it depends. And and th the reason that we've sort of segmented all these things out and let you guys pick and choose what you want is because different students learn best in different ways, right? So uh, pick, just pick the pieces that you need. You just need the answers, cool, get LSAT link. You just need uh, a tutor, cool, just get some tutoring hours. You just need the, the channel, cool, cool, just get the channel, right? It's, it's whatever you, whichever you need. All right. Uh, any other questions from y'all? We, we're, we're, I, I don't want to keep you over. We only got, we only got seconds to go. I did promise that I'd answer questions though. You know, anything you want to know about the LSAT? Kaplan, me. Oh, Lisa, I'm so glad. I'm so glad uh, that this was helpful to you. Elise, yeah, we're going to send you the recording. We're going to send you the link to the recording. You've already been sent the, the study guide. Make sure you check your, your, uh, uh, your, 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 your email for that study guide um, that has the strategy sheet in there. And then work really hard, y'all. That's the, the most important thing. I believe in you. I know you can do this. Uh, and if we can help you, we want to help you. Let us help you. Tell us what you need. We'll figure it out. We'll make the money work. Uh, because the most important thing is uh, that uh, you get the resources you need. You work really hard and you get that LSAT score. All right, y'all. Uh, thanks so much for your hard work and your attention. Crystal, absolutely. There are options. I would recommend that you call and talk to somebody because the, the details will matter uh, for what we can do. But uh, I would recommend, give us, give us a jingle, uh, talk to a real human about that. Uh, and, and, and that way we can get you the best thing. You're welcome. Thanks for asking. Maybe I'll see you in class. One of my classes that starts next week. Also, if you're in the Chicagoland area, I don't know if anybody is, but if you're in the Chicagoland area, I got a, a, a in-person course starting in two weeks, the 16th at University of Chicago. Uh, so might see you there too. Good work, everybody. Keep working hard.